Jim. Welcome back to the training ground. I know it's only been a, a couple of weeks. We've got the sun shining for you and you, you return back here. How does it feel coming back to, to this place? I mean, the last time you were here was maybe when the bus parade was taking place? Yeah, obviously we were here a couple of weeks ago for for a nice celebration, so uh, it wasn't too long ago. But yeah, it's uh, a lot's changed already. As you can see, the pitch has uh, been torn up already getting ready for next season already. Yeah. How's your summer been so far? We were just talking before this. You're doing your A licence at the moment? Yeah, so I managed to get away for, for five nights with, with the family, but it was straight back and then onto quite an intense course uh, uh, at St George's Park for the A licence. So started that this year, so it's a, it's a year long process. So um, it's exciting times. Yeah, well, we wanted to get you back in, Jim. It's an end to seven years here at, at Oxford United. I believe it's 260 appearances, 57 goals. You're up there and one of the the record holders for this football club, a real legend. I mean, you done all right here, didn't you? Yeah, no, it's been a been a great journey since I signed there at 28. Was it 2017? I think it was. Um, so yeah, lots of fond memories and. Uh, I think it was almost the perfect way to finish with we've actually been able to get this this club into the championship. Have you had a moment at all to let it sink in your your seven years here at Oxford? No, not not really. It's been quite full on so far this summer obviously with with a quick holiday, the celebrations and and then the A license. So um, but yeah, I think I think over time, especially over sort of the next 2 to 3 months, I think you'll really sink in and and realised just what, what what wonderful time I had here and all, all the amazing people I met, all the all the great football we got to play. So, what comes to mind when you think back? I know seven years is a lot that happened in that time, and maybe the most recent memory of going up at Wembley might just stick there more and most. But when you think back, is there anything in particular that comes to mind about your time here? Lots, to be honest. But basically, just a story of football. How many ups and downs there can be within within a journey and uh, you know not everyone's going to get the chance to finish on, on a high so so that was really nice because although, although we finished on a high that obviously throughout that time there was uh, there was a lot of sticky moments as well. Mm. Take us back to the moment that you signed seven years ago 2017 I'm sure the ambition when you came in was to try and reach the championship we eventually got there <laughs> at the end of the, the seven years but what was the, the young James Henry like when he arrived at Oxford back then? Obviously when I first arrived uh, it was that was a bit of turmoil as well because obviously Michael Apperton was was originally the one that we had been speaking to and then all of a sudden he left um, and we were, were waiting to see who came in um, and obviously Pep got it and I ended up ended up signing um, and it's just been it's just been a long journey <laughs> to, 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 to get to here obviously at that time that the pool was one that I played against Oxford the, the season before, and they were playing some some really good football. And yeah, just getting married and wanting to start a young young family, so it was nice to get closer towards home. And you know, I thought Oxford at the time was a club that was moving in the right direction. So so they were sort of my reasons for signing. Um, and here we are, seven years later, and, and, and lots of stories to yeah. tell. How have you seen the club progress in those seven years? Because I imagine when you, you came in, we weren't at this training ground no, either. No. So how have you seen that progression in that time? Yeah, there's been a huge progression. Obviously, before we were just over the road um, at the BMW garage and, and the training ground, um, how can I put it nicely, it wasn't great. <laughs> um, even, even down to things now that the, 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 the club's trying to be more sustainable, they need to get that stadium. Um, and once they get that, you know, this club can, can go far. What do you remember then of those first few days coming in to, to a new football club, some of the, the faces that you saw then? I mean, I don't know if anyone would be here other than Sam Long from your, your time coming into the door. Yeah, no, not many. It was just getting to know people, getting to know that if you weren't one of the first three or four back in the showers, you were getting a cold shower. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was just sort of getting to know my surroundings and getting to, to, to know the boys and, and try and find my place within the team. I mean, you really just hit the ground running when you came into the club, particularly in those first couple of years when we were maybe battling at the wrong end of the table. You scored some really important goals. I think one against Doncaster will spring to mind for, for most supporters. What do you remember about, about that occasion? Yeah, so when I first came in, I, I actually didn't hit the ground running. It probably took me three or four months to, to, to get going. I originally signed one, another 
draw to come down to this level is I wanted to get away from playing on the wing because um, I'd always seen myself more as a cent central player and uh, the first six months of the season I, I played right wing and <laughs> probably didn't play my best football but but after that I, I, I moved into the number 10 and I think I scored 10 or 11 goals from, from February onwards. Um, you know, we managed to stay up that season and then, um, yeah, it was... Uh, it, it was nice for me personally and nice for the club because, you know, it wasn't what I came here to do was to, to be fighting at the bottom of the table. But um, some seasons go like that and you have to figure out a way to survive. After those first couple of years, the club really started to progress and started challenging at the top end of the table as well. What shifted, do you think, during that time to see us start to compete at that top end? Obviously, Carl came in. Um, I was playing some really good football to start with um, and we had a really good squad as well. Um, we had a lot of connections on the pitch that just seemed to click um, you know, and we just never quite got over the line. It took a little bit, a bit longer than it probably should have done but you know, we were always there or thereabouts. Yeah. As much as there's a lot of really good memories, is there one thing that really just sticks that still that Wickham final for you? Do you know what? I've never really spoke about it. I still think I made the right decision. <laughs> fact, fact, like fans who weren't there, I don't think I ever looked at the goal when I received the ball. Obviously, there was no fans there. All I could hear was Matty screaming, and as I've received it side on, all I saw was his white shirt. So uh, I've played the pass, and you know, Stuart's made a great interception. But um, obviously, lots of things went went wrong on the day, and maybe that's one of them. But. Um, you know, I still look at that as a, a, a fond season. Um, you know, had the season not been curtailed, I'm pretty sure we would have we would have been challenging for that top two. Sometimes in football, you've experienced it before that you have those low moments that then makes you appreciate the high moments even more. And to then get promotion this season with victory at Wembley as well, just how special and how sweet did that feel? Yeah, it was unbelievable. Obviously, I wasn't even involved on the day but it was still a great occasion um, even for myself included um, you know I'm lucky enough to have won the league and come second as well before so to do it that way is just a little bit different it's that little bit more more special on the day where there's, there's so much riding on that one game so so it was a great achievement for the whole club and, uh, and every person involved. Yeah, there's going to be so many memories though for you to look back on when you eventually take the time to sit down and do so. As you said, 57 goals in, in seven years. Like, does, does anything just come to your mind when you try and pinpoint any particular goals or moments? That Doncaster goal is kind of up there for, for me in terms of just the importance of it. Um, I was really frustrated actually on the day because for some reason I didn't start that game um, and I'd been playing really well. but. I came off the bench and you know, don't score loads. I've scored a few headers, but but that goal just felt like we were safe after that. Um, and I think it was only two weeks later I had, I had my first child, so uh, it was quite a special period for me. And leaving the club now, you're going to be leaving a lot of the the, the boys behind. Um, you must have some really special memories with some special people over those seven years. Yeah, loads. I'm, I'm actually going to meet Matty for. Uh, Let's call it a coffee uh, <laughs> after this. So um, yeah, there's lots of friendships and you know there's lots of people that I miss. Uh, there's so many good people within this football club, and it's not just the players that, that, that make it work. There's there's hundreds of staff that, that that play such a contribution into the success of Oxford United. And there's not many people that get the nickname the Goat <laughs> in football. <laughs> yeah, I don't really know where that came from, but you know, obviously it's a, it's a very flattering and. Uh, yeah, I like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, the fans as well, Jamo, they really took to you during your time here after seven years. I know you're not on social media, so you wouldn't have seen the, the outcry of emotion when it was announced that you would be leaving the club as well. If you do get the chance, I would say go on and have a look if you're going to go on social media at all. Just a, a word for them and the support that they've given you over the seven years. No, they've been fantastic. You know, there's so many faces that I've met and different people um, from all over the Oxfordshire um, and they play such a vital role in the football club you know without I think it's the old cliche without fans there is no football so 
they've been fantastic throughout my personal journey and you know I'm glad that they got to, to see Oxford win at Wembley. You know, I think there was 40 odd thousand of them there. Just shows the scope of this football club and, uh, and where it could potentially go. What happens now then? I would really like to continue playing for, for, for one more year, but you know, I've got a keen eye on, on coaching and management. Um, I know that's a, a long journey in itself, but um, you know, it's one I'm keen to pursue. Um, so we'll see, see where that takes me. But you'll be back in, in Oxford at some point supporting the boys? Yeah, definitely. You know, um, I've still got a connection with lots of people within the football club, so, so it'll be great to come back down here as and when I can uh, over the coming years. Perfect. Well, Joe, uh, on behalf of everybody at the football club, supporters, staff, players, everybody, thank you so much for your, your seven years here. Um, you've made such an impact. You'll go down in the history of this club. So thank you very much and all the best for the future. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.